welcome everyone to another edition of latest and greatest IT and security or <clears throat> not news here live on this channel. And starting where we left off in last video with this Iowa Caucus uh, app here, another problem it could have been hacked. It's like yeah, apparently they someone published this app, this APK for Android. Um, apparently, at least, why do they show? An, does it look like an iPhone or actually not so great? Maybe not. Anyway, um, all this round and rectangle look similar. Anyway, so um, this glitch in the smartphone app used to count and uh, report the votes from individual continues to delay results on Mondays as in one week. So which, which did we even have? Anyway, um, some days ago. A week ago, huh? Oh, it's, anyway, doesn't really matter. So, but a closer look shows that the app had potential graver problems that apparently did not come into play. It's vulnerable to hacking, apparently. So, this was insecure that votes, total passwords, and other sensitive information could have been intercepted and even changed. So, like, yeah, without running without HTTPS or encryption or something, yeah, because the lack of safeguards, transmissions to and from the phone were left largely unprotected, I guess, like, un also, yeah, I wish this stuff would be a little bit clear as usual, like, encrypted or not, like, unprotected, what do they mean? Probably encryption, but, yeah, probably no time and money for an SSL certificate, because now it is so 80s, and, um, anyway, poor decision, and, yeah, they were said problems were elementary, it's called poor decision, and, yeah, those people we should trust with crypto backdoors and government running security or not apparently but yeah speaking about government running security apps that used to used by Netanyahu's uh, Likud leaks Israel's entire voter register so they have government done IT totally amazing and in 2020 as amazing as our drop frames names and uh, identification numbers, addresses of over 6 million voters were leaked through the unsecure elector app. Yeah, and then the government finds companies for some small stuff, but totally <laughs> unsecured and unprotected stuff, you name it. Um, same in US, same in Israel. The Likud has uploaded the full register of Israel's voters to an application. Also, yeah, 2020, you bundle, apparently, if I read this correctly, allegedly the whole voting register in an app because, nah, what? It's like, can't I need a double and triple face palm for this, certainly sometime soon here. Um, of 6 million citizens, yeah, that is a sporty achievement. Achievement will unlock. Information includes full names, identity, uh, identity card numbers, addresses, gender of every single eligible voter in Israel, as well as a phone number. And yeah, if you ever wanted some nice data collection, I guess that app is a uh, go-to. Now, voter register was uploaded by Likud to the Elector app, which is used by the party to manage election day. Also, yeah, 2020, right? yeah, we need an app for everything, including managing an election. And then, yeah, people who, yeah, everyone needs to code, right? Politicians and, and people like Tim Apple telling us everyone needs to code and yeah, everyone needs to code and that is a result, amazing stuff. <clears throat> According to information obtained by Haaretz, Har uh, <clears throat> as well as Norm Rotem and, uh, and so on, a vulnerability in the application allows anyone easily download the entire voter register. I wonder what they mean with, uh, with vulnerability in the app. I have the feeling it sounds a little bit like it was bundled or something. Only known to leaks a similar magnitude occurred in 2006 when the interior minister employee stole the population register and distributed it illegally. Yeah. 2020, you don't need someone to steal your voting register when you can just download and bundle it yourself. Speaking about Software error exposes ID numbers of 1.26 million Danish citizens. Danish tax portal accidentally shares taxpayer identification numbers with Google and Adobe Analytics service. So, yeah, or I don't know. Any, anyway, uh, if you see a pattern, then probably government cannot do IT and hiring their friends and family and allegedly, apparently, and yeah, friends and family trying to do software and um, the state of IT research and education, apparently in 2020, software error in Denmark. Also, everything is always a software error, right? Not like some management or planning error, some, anyway. Um, 
exposes tax accidentally exposes a personal identification number 1.26 million Danish citizens a fifth of the country's total population the error lasted for five days between February 2nd and January the 24th uh, uh, five years sorry I mess read this five years not five days um, so yeah a software error for five years and um, Leaked was discovered following an audit by the Danish Agency for Development and Simplification. According to the error, the Danish Tax Administration, yada yada, software bugs that every time a user updated account details in the portal settings section, their CPR number would be added to the URL. The URL would then be collected by analytic services running on the site, in this case Adobe and Google, um, and so on, anyway. Um, Navarro writes, paper still king for important documentation, unhackable. I wouldn't call it unhackable, you certainly can tamper with it, but certainly this is why, uh, especially in, in Germany, but certainly many other activists, mo most likely also the EFF and other uh, organizations around the world, mandate paper, uh, paper trail for voting that this can be like verified, not like something is randomly going through the internet unencrypted and unsigned, and uh, later nobody can verify who voted for what. Um, but um, yeah, hacking voting machines and losing all this stuff on the way. Uh, certainly paper not unhackable, but certainly a very good measure to have some paper trail. Uh, speaking about uh, paper trail and stuff, here yeah, it's the slide we probably have for this animation. We want to reload it because text animation in 2020. The intelligence scoop of the century. So the Washington Post writes, this is in the news, I think today or yesterday, something about a company called Crypto AG here in Switzerland. And so apparently some news sites make it pretend this is breaking news. However, I thought this is already was known by everyone. I thought it has already even been in the Wikipedia article of the Crypto AG for a very long time. So what was known in the industry, like for myself and friends and family here, but certainly no for you at home also as a recurring reminder. The Crypto AG here was a long-standing company here in Switzerland, first break with building code making machines during the World War II, flush with cash it became a dominant maker of encryption devices for decades, navigating waves of technology from mechanical gears to electronic circuits, silicon chips and software, the Swiss firm made millions of dollars selling equipment to more than 120 countries. Well into the 21st century, the clients included Iran, multiple uh, juntas in Latin America, nuclear rivals, India and Pakistan, even the Vatican. But also, yeah, the Vatican needs encryption, right? But what none of the customers ever knew was that Crypto AG was secretly owned by the CIA in a highly classified partnership with the West Germans. So yeah, also West German here. The German intelligence services, so um, co-investors there into the crypto AG. If you were wondering, government mandating crypto backdoors, right? Because we need more data leaks. Apparently government mandated data leaks in 2020 or since Second World War, apparently, allegedly here, to those reporting spy agencies rigged the company's devices so they could easily break the codes that countries use to send encrypted messages. If you were wondering why am I continuously speaking about government mandated crypto backdoors like yeah amazing stuff decade long arrangement among the most closely guarded secrets of the cold war laid in bare and classified comprehensive CIA history of the operation obtained by the washington post and ZDF, the second german public tv channel here uh, public near here public german broadcaster just as i said and um, Although, yeah, I thought this was public knowledge already for 20 years and even on Wikipedia, but apparently groundbreaking investigative journalism. The operation, known first by the codename uh, Tesoros and later Rubicon, ranks among the most audacious in CIA history. It was intelligence coup of the century, as the CIA report concluded, foreign governments were paying good money to the US and West Germany. Thanks for that, by the way for the privilege of having their most secret communication read by at least two and possibly many of the five and six eyes there to Snowden Papers foreign countries. From the 1970s on the CIA 
and its code-breaking siblings the National Security Agency controlled nearly every aspect of the crypto operation, presiding with their German partners over hiring decisions, this, uh, designing its technology, sabotaging the algorithm and including its uh, end directing its sales targets. Then the US and West Germany spies sat back and listened, uh, monitored, monitored Iran uh, during the 1978 hostage crisis, fed intelligence about uh, Argentina's military to Britain during the Falkland Wars, tracked the assassination of South American dictators and caught Libyan officials con uh, congratulating themselves in the 1986 bombing in a Berlin here disco. Um, so yeah, program had limits um, and so on whatsoever. Also they backed out there in um, in the 90s, so the, they left, they, they even sold, so they on, on top of selling broken backdoor devices, they even make money and then sold this before this became wider knowledge. Um, the German spy agency BND came to the belief the risk of the exposure was too great and left the operation in the early 90s, but the CIA brought the German stake and simply kept going. Uh, ranging crypto for all its espionage verse until 2018 when the agency sold off the company's assets according to yeah the, the broken and backdoored company assets that's so 2018 uh, welcome to 2020 and governments still asking well also the double standard of governments um, demanding security from IT op companies like ourselves and each and everyone, but themselves cannot even get voting data and tax databases right, and even rigging and backdooring the crypto from big companies, um, listening in there and still having the double standard of still demanding even more um, crypto backdoors because what could possibly go wrong and e leaking even more data and having even more security vulnerabilities there, but as usual, Leave me in the comments below how much this triggers you and what you think and comment. In similar news, Emotet, or oh, I'm still unsure about this crappy name of pronunciation, in evolves with new Wi-Fi spreader. If you were wondering this Emotet stuff was a thing of Windows, then welcome to 2020. Highly sophisticated Trojan, Trojan that typically also serves as a loader for other malware. Um, a key functionality of Emotet is ability to de de deliver custom modules and plugins and uh, stealing Outlook contacts and spreading over the LAN. Recently, Binary Defense has identified a new loader type that takes advantage of WLAN API interface to enumerate Wi Fi networks in the area and then also, um, yeah, APIs. I see it coming soon. Chrome, right? Chrome, LAN, Wi Fi, USB. APIs enumerating your Wi-Fi stuff and getting even more data and scanning Wi-Fi networks in your area probably coming soon to you in an attempt to spread to those networks, infecting all devices that it can access in the process. So if you were wondering unsecured Wi-Fi stuff with outdated software, firmware and similar fun stuff next to you, then um, yeah, that is coming next to you uh, 2020 and um, yeah not only on windows machines also sorry your wi-fi uh, people right here uh, foxlet maybe they should make an article on the clipper chip next year something of that sort exactly um, another reporting here german reporting grave vulnerability discovered in yielings vo voice over ip services yeah internet of things and connected everywhere, including your telephones, right? Raise your hand if you are surprised that there are vulnerabilities. The flaw affects the company's global automatic configuration service, which provides voice over IP phones with login credentials, phone books and call lists. What could possibly go wrong? IT security vTrust has uncovered a vulnerability in the automatic provisioning service of voice over IP phone maker Yearlink. vTrust research indicates that this company's entire product line is suspectable to the floor since the method is shared across all the models. Yearlink, a favorite choice of providing cloud telephony services. Oh, so cloud telephony services, right? Um, so 2020, 
markets, among the market's leaders in its field and one of China's most successful companies with a net income of 129 million US dollars in 2018 because of the flaw it can be exploited remotely via the internet. It raises grave concerns of IT security as a serious implications, privacy protection as well. While the attacker can't access Yilin's phones directly, they can still swipe users' login credentials, phone books, caller lists, programmed shortcuts and other user-specific information by hijacking, hijacking the service. Also, yeah, when people, everyone should program and everyone just trials and error your voice over IP and Internet of Things stuff. And why I shout this out, that people learn stuff you need to Certainly, stuff needs to authenticate it and, and encrypt it and not with backdoors and not encrypted. And yeah, anyway, let's see. Um, the S in IO, the S here, yeah, uh, Foxlet writes the saying is the S in IoT is security. Yeah, good point. Also, how to secure communications, um, secure shell and write on terminal. And um, yeah, more stuff here, full disclosure, zero day vulnerability backdoor in firmware, speaking of firmware right from China, high silicon based DVRs and VRs and IP cameras. They are full disclosure on recent backdoor integrated in DVR devices from high silicon SOC. The described vulnerability allows attackers to gain root shell access, full control of the device, full disclosure format and previous work, so historical context, earlier known version of had Telnet access enabled with a static root password, which can be recovered from the firmware image, relatively little computational effort. This vulnerability was uh, covered by previous uh, author's article in Russia 2013. In 2017, did a more comprehensive analysis of high silicon firmware, discovered remote code execution vulnerability in a built-in web server, and many, many other vulnerabilities. Also here, yeah, some cheap vendors try to do code and yeah, can't do code, right? Because yeah, everyone just trial and error, stack overflow and copy and paste code from the internet because it probably is what Tim Apple recommends here on code.org and stuff. More recent firmware versions had Telnet access and debug port disabled by default. Instead, they had an open port 9530 TCP, which was used to accept specific commands, start Telnet daemon and enable shell access, which is static pass password, which is the same for all devices. So yeah, amazing upgrade. and. This, as I think they write here, um, that I think they write here that they, yeah, um, the full disclosure format for the report has been chosen due to lack of trust to the vendor. So, proof of concept code is presented below. So, 2020 security researchers have so little trust in cheap. Uh, silicon manufacturers that they rather just full disclosure that here because yeah you can't really deal with the vendors that they properly deal with it anyway and yeah also 2017 and stuff and people think it's a good idea to have a uh, debug service enablement on on all the devices with port 9530 because yeah uh, be close telnet but there is a hidden debug port it's like yeah nobody will gonna find this anywhere right um, and if you're wondering why I personally never purchased uh, stuff like no-name cheap boards of this all winner and stuff, it's like, yeah, I'm I'm not in there, like also at times GPL violating, not even like binary images of something, not even this GPL allegedly once upon a time violating, they became better and published something. But yeah, not gonna use all winner and stuff board support packages with questionable binary only blobs and yeah certainly you find some good old security vulnerability in there anyway um, Navarro writes recently found out that my the Nikon camera is running a complete Linux machine if it's just networking just booted when using the LAN telnet running with the root no password um, that sounds interesting which Nikon camera is it also a shout out while we speak about this Random shout out, there is some um, there is some alternative camera firmware like Magic Lantern or something uh, for Canon cameras. What is the name of that updating your open source? Maybe it was Magic Lantern or something of that sort. So much to having a Magic Lantern. I remember it even correctly, maybe. 
Um, so yeah, if you have some cameras, some you can flash with much feature improved, also not loading for some sort, also not many. Anyway, a random shout out. So that's a Nikon D4 something, same problem. Um, that sounds interesting. I'm surprised they run Linux. I thought they run some custom real-time OS something, but um, yeah. Also, uh, because Android in 2020 and security, the Android security bulletin February 2020, among other things, remote code execution through Bluetooth audio, I think, RCE of um, probably also closed source components, right? These vulnerabilities affect uh, closed source components, which are yeah, not into closed source. Uh, also, recurring shout out, totally not a fan, totally not approved. There should not be any closed source components. Uh, why should there be um, no security through security? And certainly you don't need to hide your DDR for link training there or, or whatever. Also, don't run GPUs with binary only stuff because that is so 1990s. And so yeah, no NVIDIA driver because uh, also you can't, you can't run your own operating system. You can't um, patch it, fix it um, and so on. Source code patches for these issues has been provided there. Where is by the way? Bluetooth. Uh, hello. Uh, where is so? Uh, is it this one? Maybe. Maybe this is just stupidly listed here. Why do I not have? Ah, uh, Linux now. Right, it's Linux just for when you use the networking on that camera. Otherwise, it shut down, which is interesting. It's an MX5 800 megahertz sock with 120 megabyte from that. Fuck. Let's buy lean towards AMD because better support for your AMD GPU. Yeah. Um, let's see. What is this here? Um, ah, here. I think this is a Bluetooth. So correct. Continues. Packet length in L2 cap continues length wrongly calculated the reason logic in reassembly logic then remote sends more data than expected wrong length uh, leading to memory corruption hence um, so this is I think as far as I remember remote code execution although not a little bit in Bluetooth something um, Anyway, this listing has a little bit leaving a little bit to be desired. It's not even listing Bluetooth here. So yeah, you heard it here on this channel. Um, all the listing is a little bit near. Um, yeah, here is remote code execution. That should be this one, um, actually. But here, of course, many more. So that is not the only one. We have also many, many more. I, this is what is a little bit annoying, in my opinion, is that this does not give a summary here. So you like not like it, Apples or others that you see. This is Bluetooth. This is uh, audio. This is USB. Whatever. This is Wi-Fi. This, is, in my opinion, a little bit near, um, but mm, yeah, whatever. In similar news, Windows 10 warning. Um, recurring shout out. Everything. Hashtag peak bugs broken at Mac OS and Windows. Certainly, yeah, both actually. Can't even one more broken than the other. Windows 10 warning here again. Anger at Microsoft rises with series new failure. Apparently here the uh, Windows 10 may not be essential, but what may not um, Windows 10 may not be essential, but users new and old have uh, this. The summary is already starting ridiculous now. Nah, whatever. So the drama began there the, the other day when Windows 10 users suddenly found that the search was broken with a blank search showing where results should be even for those who try to perform a local search to their files breaking with the tradition Microsoft was fast to act blaming a temporary server side issue but the explanation instead uh, kicked a hornet nest first the fix doesn't work for everyone second and more wrongly Microsoft explained uh, explanation doesn't add up and it has prompted serious questions to be asked about how the operating system works with what's personal data it is sharing because yeah, so local search broken, maybe so you also wonder what is local and remote search and as usual breaking the last Windows 7 update with a black screen. But I also wonder how can big companies like big mega corporations if something breaks in a tiny Linux distributions of ours, but yeah, but breaking this 
industry leading 80% something desktop installation market share stuff. But yeah, how can this kind of stuff still break in 2020? I have no idea. And uh, leave me in the comments below what you think. Certainly, we ourselves only run this in virtual machines mostly. But even then, even the surface has broken touch disease here with the Entrick digitizer previous video. And also for me, often in the virtual machines when I only start them once a month, the update usually goes totally havoc. There is not really installing on Windows side. Series floor uh, that looked in sudo. So yeah, not only Windows, also Linux and Mac OS and stuff. We had this also, by the way, I think we had a series floor in sudo the other year. But now we have another nine year old uh, root privilege escalation in sudo. So you probably want to update this in your Linux distribution. Easy for unprivileged users to exploit. So um, yeah, you totally found and don't need to tell you, but thousands of Unix like operating systems has received a patch for the potential serious bugs that allows unprivileged users. Yeah, we set this vulnerability tracked as CVE 2019. 18634 as a result of stack based buffer overflow bug found. Also, recurring shoutout maybe we should simply not program in C anymore, but triggered only when either administrator or in downstream or such as Linux Mint or Elementary OS has enabled a known option as password feedback something turned on. The vulnerability can be exploited even by the user who aren't listed in the sudo was file. So, mm, yeah, amazing stuff written in C and. Um, yeah, no pseudo permissions required. In similar news, 10 of millions of Cisco devices vulnerable to CDP on floor, network segmentation blow apart by security bugs, enterprise face fear of phone, fragging fast as doom spawns on IP phones. Certainly at least some floor with style. Enterprise network giant, also Cisco recurring shout out usually in each and every of our security uh, newscasts here. So if you were wondering who has the latest and greatest security, <coughs> maybe not. Enterprise. So yeah, we had this released a set of software fixes on Wednesday to address five critical vulnerabilities in devices that rely on Cisco discovery protocol known as to its friends as CDP, proprietary layer two data link protocol for gathering information about network devices. So yeah, maybe you shouldn't cook your own protocol. And if you do, maybe not with security flaws implemented in almost all Cisco's products, including router switches, IP phones, and IP cameras. And uh, exploiting this flaw involves first hacking smart TVs, printers, smart lighting, video cameras, or batch readers that have been put on a segmented portion of the corporate network to isolate them from managed corporate IT gear. Then some um, identifying this and exploit exploiting a vulnerability in one of the typical low security unmanaged consumer devices and so on. Since these devices have no security, an attacker can exploit those devices to get uh, foothold into the organization. Uh, attacker can target the switch with a malicious crafted CDP packet, triggering a memory corruption on the switch. Also, yeah, memory corruption on the switch, right? Leading to a remote code execution. Just, yeah, yeah. Um, probably, I need to do, um, not the greatest fan of Rust for many reasons, but we certainly need to do something. And in my opinion, one step to the solution is, leave me in the comments below what you think, but in my opinion, we simply can not continue to write completely unsafe languages such as C. At least one should program with a little more modern constructs with at least C++, but then certainly leaving all of those old fashioned easy to get wrong C functions out of the mix. Certainly makes no sense to use a C++ compiler and still use all the C functions for backward compatibility. My opinion, this should not be used at all. And um, ideally, of course, something of a totally more safe language like Rust or totally soon discussed on this channel. Leave me in the comments below what you think. Unfortunately, I'm not the greatest fan of Rust for also many reasons, but it's certainly one way, certainly a good way in, in some ways, but not in others like cargo and ecosystem. But certainly we need to do something. And even experts and 20 year old veterans like my safe and friends and family and even, even um, huge, um, what is the right term? Um, 
I uh, just used it recently, um, huge, um, f f prominent people like Felix from Leitner here in Germany with security companies, even they write a lot of stuff in C, DietLibC and web servers. And in my opinion, this is not the best practice example of writing low level. His code is, in my opinion, not even the most readable. Maybe we can take a look another day. But in my opinion, there's a disconnect of of very prominent examples who have who run a blog with with millions of views and then doing security reviews and stuff and then writing C code, which or C code at all in my opinion not the best practice, but not even the most readable C code. So yeah, but leave me in the comments below what you think. Um, certainly, I need to be a better example myself and not do this low level FPGA stuff in C and. Um, yeah, soon also microkernel. I need to think about this. It's a pity that, in my opinion, Rust has some ecosystem cargo stuff that is not the most desirable. Otherwise, I could also go Rust. But um, yeah, soon more videos on that. Probably don't want to share, like, and subscribe um, for that. And um, also, here exclusive here on Reuters of the German Telekom here of. Fearing Huawei curbs German Telecom tells Nokia to shape up. The thing is, of course, America and stuff is very, um, very vocal to tell its allies, hey, you can't use Huawei for your IT infrastructure because, yeah, security. And the problem is, of course, there are not so many infrastructure companies left, like, for example, Nokia. And the German Telecom now allegedly says here, or told like Nokia, hey, you need to improve your products and services to win business installing German 5G stuff here in Europe, according to some internal documents, apparently, with sources with direct knowledge to the matter, allegedly. Um, so they apparently dropped Nokia as a provider for radio gear from all but one of its dozen market, dozens of markets in the region, according to the source and the documents. And um, the documents written by the vendors management team for internal meetings and talks with Nokia is uh, also show that the German group considers Nokia the worst performer among all suppliers of 5G test de uh, tests and deployments. So yeah, um, there you have it, right? Americans say, hey, you can't use Huawei because it has security. And then in reality, like, yeah, what should we use? There's not much left. And the other stuff is like the worst. It's like, <laughs> what, what then? But so in, I said this before, uh, using Cisco or Huawei, it's like yeah, either the US intelligence spies on you or the Chinese intelligence spies on you or each and other breaks their backdoor and security vulnerabilities anyway here, live on this channel anyway. So yeah, stuff needs to be more secure and there cannot be any government mandated backdoors because let's be honest, no matter if you have an US, UK, China or German, France, and whatnot suppliers. There are always local government regulations of we need some backdoor access and crypto backdoor because they're terrorists. And in reality, everything is not secure because they're backdoors and security vulnerabilities. So, yeah, they decided apparently to give Nokia another chance to meet their uh, men's relationship according to the documents, but uh, notice that they need to improve their level their level up their game in terms of quality and stuff because otherwise yeah. um, Navarro writes in the kind of uh, C stuff Navarro you like C and thinks everybody should learn C um, teaches people how to program properly and know what they're doing really try to hard to diffuse the bomb if you're sitting on it yeah so I um, Probably I save this for another video otherwise, but yeah, thanks for this comment. Probably we make a dedicated programming languages stream sometime soon on this or the more uh, mainstream channel. In similar news, um, more mainstream news, uh, Moto Razer durability problems begin to pile up here just a day after the launch. And so far, the numerous broken install demos failing the folding test. Here, this of course is folding phone here after also shout out uh, previously to the Samsung fold 
that was breaking but yeah who thought this folding display was a good idea and um, yeah also of course you overpray for the premium of technology presentation thin flexing display stuff and then of course it's fragile no surprise there and i think they some were said it's fine also yeah they tested some device but after just 27,000 volts it fails the hinge mechanism jammed up but i think they already motor already responded to this that uh, this machine is not um, the right machine designed to fold this so this is not like how real world scenario with this machine here robot used for testing but um, yeah in general I'm not surprised there certainly an interesting matrix looking concept but otherwise like yeah a little probably a little bit fragile for the money but leave in the comments below what you think of this kind of stuff speaking about similar stuff uh, google ads target are literally um google ads targeted at literally one person like you only could be the future of doxing they say here on some opinion piece they write it's easy for anyone to disaggregate your data and use it against you so they wrote there click on online at your data path through google you know and third party marketeers no surprise there includes your location age income web browsing history where you work and so on and so on and they make a case that um, every day um, you could in the future target it so precisely that you could track individuals like very precisely if you like chosen to want to for some reason and yeah this is of course uh, certainly in my opinion plausible danger there on the web with all the tracking and data accumulation and also all the fingerprinting uh, usb and other like this with all this fancy browser features also i've even seen 15 years ago long before i started this youtube channel 15 years ago it was already a thing to fingerprint your system with fonts installed um, having javascript enumerate all the funds and everyone has additional funds so you will be surprised it was a decade old article how precisely you can track people with just the list of fonts installed and then other screen size and other version um, versions of browser and operating system and other fun stuff how precisely with us just this few long known low tech terms and other um, modern features and stuff you can track people in similar news from Google, Google tells facial recognition startup Clearview AI to stop scraping photos. The search giant allegedly sends the company cease and desist letter. And um, following Twitter, Google, YouTube have become the latest companies to send cease and desist letter to Clearview AI, a startup behind the controversial face recognition system that more than 600 police departments across North America use. Came under scrutiny earlier this year showed that the company had been scraping billions of images of the internet building a database of faces google has demanded clear view to stop scraping youtube videos for its database as well as delete its photos and so yeah uh, also government wants this database is right even in don't need to look to use the usa also even in europe and and stuff uh, government wants this databases to track terrorists all over at railway stations even here around the corner in, in germany in berlin and uh, yet private companies scrape the internet anyway but it's of course interesting right um, the double standard of google scraping the whole internet for everything right google has the right to scrape everything but other people should not scrape the internet it's a little bit double standard you could also argue then uh, it's a fair play if it's online for something then yeah everyone can access it right it's of course a very fine line there um, i have also no idea how to solve this of course you cannot stop people having bots scraping the internet like we do ourselves here with open source update here with our own data ai of cairo mm here amazing stuff let's hope that i um, update this here scraping the internet for open source package updates here previous video on the main channel our own data now data ai updating our linux distribution for fun and for profit but yeah how do you you can certainly not stop them to do that i don't really have a solution there except do not upload all your photos to the internet and 
try to avoid other people doing so. Um, other, aside from this, Facebook and Google will have the database anyway, or other similar Twitter and Instagram, which is Facebook. But yeah, last but not least, in similar Silicon Valley news, Apple lost a lawsuit here in Europe, in France, um, here and, and needs to pay only, at least they need, but only 25 million, at least something for the French court here has found, apparently, as far as I understood the summary of this French, that Apple is intentionally slowing down previous generations of iPhones, purposely with the intent to people get people to purchase new iPhones. Not surprised personally whether they just don't optimize this and the code bloat just gets slower and slower on old phones or they intentionally do it. At least from my perspective and experience, I can say the batteries are garbage anyway. Um, in my opinion, one day battery life when you is not amazing and when you use it in the cold and stuff, then easy, easily less so. Even if they don't do this intentionally, in my opinion, the battery is at the border of usability and it is no surprise that each and every of my iPhone has at least one or two free battery swaps from Apple in extended battery replacements. And to me, it's no surprise that certainly Tim Apple and its team squeezing the Chinese manufacturers, buying the cheapest batteries they can squeeze them to deliver. And second of all, having the most minimal, the, the most small as possible batteries in the phone. So people desperately are longing for a new phone with the battery life not amazing and degrading over time. It's only fair that I have each phone battery replaced one or two times. Still not particularly environmentally friendly nor user friendly, but at least the French court decided that slowing down old phones is intentionally. I'm not sure if that is a final word there or if they appeal that, but just another data point of how amazing uh, or not the stuff is in this day and age. I hope you learned something. That's the news summary of as usual when I skip a few days then we have already 16, I think it was articles. I rushed through a little bit as usual. Leave me in the comments below. Still not sure about the best format, whether to do it long every two or three days long or every day a little bit. Leave me in the comments below what you think. I personally have a little bit of feeling I should maybe do each day a small one, but uh, also allowing people on YouTube to better find it with one big topic. But um, yeah, time and money. And anyway, leave me in the comments what you think. I hope you learned something and don't forget to share, like and subscribe for all the next IT news and hardware and software tinkering on this and the main channel to come.